joining us on this live conversation on conscious eating. I know many people are looking forward to this because as we were discussing earlier, eating is something, of course, that we all do, but there's just so many fascinating aspects to it that so many of us are curious about. And we're so glad to have you here with us so you can throw light on, on this uh, a topic that is a favorite topic for so many of us. Um, so before we dive in, I would love to invite you to introduce yourself and talk about the work that you do, because I know there's so many layers to what you do. You're not just a dietitian. You're not just a nutritionist. You're not just a weight loss expert. You're all of that and so much more. So tell us, Anu, what is it that you do? All right. Thank you so much, Bhavna. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I am a medical doctor, radiologist, turned weight loss physician and functional medicine specialist. And I work with people who are chronically dealing with weight issues, dysfunctional eating and chronic diseases. And um, my work goes way beyond just nutrition. You should be eating this and that and not that. It goes way beyond that and it involves um, a permanent shift in the mindset. So I work on cognitive psychology and the neuroscience of long-term behavioral change so that whatever change people bring in terms of their body weight, their health, that is sustainable for the rest of their life and uh, they are able to uh, enjoy a peaceful relationship with food, uh, with body and their weight. Mm, wow, that sounds really powerful. And it sounds like it's a very holistic approach Absolutely. to, to uh, the way we eat, the way we take care of our health, and uh, absolutely, that's the way uh, it, ha it should be. So speaking of, since we're talking about conscious eating today and eating with greater awareness, what in your opinion is conscious eating? What does that mean? Okay, <clears throat> so conscious eating means becoming aware of your habitual patterns around eating. So uh, this definitely involves what is on your plate, becoming aware and mindful of that, as well as how you eat. But there's a bigger piece to this, uh, what you eat and how you eat, and that is the why you eat. Why you eat what you eat. So once we deal with the why you eat what you eat, that opens up this big uh, piece of awareness that takes us right into the heart of emotions. Our, uh, you know, uh, many people are aware that there's some negative emotion in their life and they, their uh, first response is eating, but they are not aware as to how to deal with that emotional eating, okay? And then when we uh, work on the emotional eating piece, that opens up the area of uh, belief system. So ultimately, conscious eating takes us right into the heart of our belief systems, our conditioned uh, thinking around eating as a society. And when we investigate that belief system, a whole new world opens up. What happens is the change that happens, it happens at the level of those uh, conditional beliefs and then the change that you make in your life that gradually becomes effortless. So in a nutshell, I would say that conscious eating is what, how, why of eating as well as the impact of your eating choices in your life together. That is wow. what I think in my opinion, conscious eating means. That's, that's, that sounds incredible. And it's, and just as you said, um, it's, it's looking at really going deep and looking at what's beneath the surface, as you said, looking at the emotions behind what we, why we eat the way that we do. And, yes. and yeah, absolutely. That gets us to the, to the root of so many of our beliefs. Um, so, you know, emotional eating, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that because here we are at a time like this, so many of us are turning to 
food for comfort yeah you bet it is uh it is yeah a common a common feature for 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 most of us um so how do we even at a time like this bring greater consciousness to the way we're eating okay so that starts with becoming more aware of your why you're eating many people think that they're just eating in response to hunger which is not true at all some sort of emotional eating everybody does but when it goes out of balance when there's a net negative consequence to the amount of emotional eating you're doing then that becomes a problem okay so uh, people eat in response to boredom they are not able to relate that boredom is also a sort of uh, vibration in the body that's the definition of an emotion and their response is eating now eating might distract somebody from boredom but that's not ultimately going to solve boredom you would really have to get up and proactively create something in your life with a purpose so similarly the emotions of anger and sadness we people have some arguments here and there they are disappointed and their go to drug is food so food definitely sort of dulls our senses and it tricks us into believing that this moment is fine and i'm feeling better now but then again it comes with a consequence there is an impact and you wonder why your life is not working and you wonder why you're perennially struggling with your weight so emotional eating definitely when goes out of balance becomes a problem and mm. the solution definitely starts with becoming conscious around your emotions and uh, learning how to deal with your emotions without resorting to food mm. food can only solve one problem and that is hunger food has zero power to do anything for your emotional life it has zero power to distract you when you when we really disturb even food doesn't you know uh, do anything for our boredom for our anger we're still sitting at the same point and we still have to deal with that stressful emotion so reaction with food is not the solution and sooner or later life make sure that we know how to deal with emotions rather than resorting to food as a solution for the emotions so for sure this is uh, a deeper work but uh, the fruits are amazing immense and um, you end up uh, uh, showing us your best self that's it's it's so beautiful that that you've uh, touched upon this and what i'm hearing you say essentially is that if we can learn to manage our emotions and if we can become more emotionally intelligent in that sense then we won't necessarily need to turn to food yeah. to to learn to deal with so many of those unpleasant emotions like boredom or frustration which typically make us turn to food and that's so powerful and so few people talk about this because often especially when we talk about food and 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 health and and weight loss and and the, this whole genre the focus tends to be so much more on the how uh, in terms of exercise or the what in terms of what to eat and what not to eat and very few people really penetrate beneath that the way the way you have just articulated which i think is so is powerful so many of my clients in the first few sessions they're like all oh, this is okay anu give me a diet plan that's going to make me slimmer that's going to solve all the problems but once they start once they start doing this work that's when they realize that food is just a symptom of of not dealing with messy emotions that that no human being is spared on the planet it's just mm -hmm. learning how to deal with your emotions and learning to become aware of uh, the thought process that is driving you to the pantry yes <laughs> wonderful and on that note um because how we eat is so deeply connected with how we think and ultimately how we live 
I'd love for you to touch upon what do you see as a connection between conscious eating and then conscious living? And how do you see, in particular, how do you see conscious eating as being an avenue to then also living more consciously and living with, with more awareness? Because it sounds like there's a powerful connection between the two. Oh, they are uh, intimately connected. In fact, they're inseparable. So I'll give you my example. I used to be 25 kilos overweight um, all for the greater part of my life. I was overweight kid, then teenage years, and then in college, I was overweight and constantly dieting and trying the next big thing in the weight loss industry. I've done it all. But when I started doing this work, not just it took me to the core of my deep rooted belief system and the way I felt about me. Um, I today look back and retrospectively say that the weight struggle has been the biggest blessing of my lifetime. Why? Because learning how to deal with your emotions and becoming aware of your thoughts and belief systems, this is what is happening in every area of life that is not working. So once you learn that, once you learn the skill set of this awareness around conscious eating, it opens up the whole life in front of you. You learn how to deal with right from minor day-to-day -day stresses to big stressful situations in your life. When Once you learn how to tackle those emotions, you become resilient to stress. And uh, it's not just that stress stops bothering you. It's just that you become conscious and you learn the tools to deal with that stress powerfully rather than becoming powerless in those situations. See, when we're resorting to food also to momentarily make ourselves feel better, that's a sign of powerlessness. We are screaming that this is a situation, I'm feeling awful, and a chocolate on an ice cream might help. So in those situations, our attempt to soothe ourselves, it's just that it's misguided, and we haven't learned how to deal with that properly. So once we start doing this work, our entire life shifts. So I, uh, when I teach this work to people, they say that they have better relationships, they are able to create what they want to create in their life with a purpose and intention behind it. So conscious eating is, is intricately tied with how you live your life because eating is inseparable. You're doing eating 24 seven every day, multiple times in a day. And that is directly linked with how you live your life. And that is why once when people start doing this work, they realize that it's not about eating, it's about their life, right? So conscious eating and conscious living are tied together and they're inseparable. Once you start working on your, in fact, even in leadership, the work you do, your eating is bound to get shifted. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I always like to say how you do one thing is how you do everything. Yes. And absolutely. the same awareness and consciousness that we can bring to the way we eat is, it, it, it is the same, um, the, the same spirit, the same mindfulness, the same awareness that we're bringing to the way we lead as well. So absolutely. I completely agree with you. The two are intertwined. Yes. Um, so um, your journey absolutely sounded uh, sounds like it, it's been a transformational one for you. Would love for you to share um, other examples, maybe women you've worked with in terms of what have been some of the benefits of bringing in this sense of awareness to the way you eat. So stress management, of course, you said is one. Better relationships is another. Yeah, to tell us more. <laughs> so conscious eating is, again, intricately tied with body consciousness, okay? So once you work on your eating and bring more awareness into that, your body consciousness expands, okay? Most of the people, um, in fact, everybody, they want to lose weight in order to look good and in order to be so-called, quote-unquote, accepted, and they're not realizing that they're not just their body. 
because I remember way back, I would resort to any sort of measures in order to lose weight. I wanted to get thinner and slimmer at any cost. And uh, when, even when I became slim, I was still struggling. I wanted more. And I realized that that thinness had nothing to do with happiness and contentment. I was still uh, in sort of this love-hate relationship with my body. Even though I was able to wear uh, good clothes that I always wanted to wear, but the struggle did not end. I had, in fact, the same amount of dislike for my body as, in fact, I would say hatred for my body as I had when I was overweight. So people don't realize that weight loss has nothing to do with the way you think about your body and weight loss will not will not overnight shift the way you perceive your body, okay? So once you bring this work into existence, this awareness in your thought patterns when it comes to eating, your body consciousness expands, you realize, you actually end up realizing that you're not just your body. Body is just a vehicle for you to live your life. That's it. And when you realize that it is the vehicle, you even end up realizing that it is the biggest asset that you have on the planet. Because of your body, you're able to experience your life. You're able to show up the way you want to experience your life. Okay, so then no affirmations are required to uh, in front of the mirror to think even positive thoughts about your body. Once you inculcate that awareness that this is a precious vehicle and this is the only one I have to show up as my best self and I'm not just my body in order for me to live my best life. I have to take care of this body. Everything shifts. You naturally develop that body confidence that you so wanted to have even before you uh, lose weight. So you begin to accept yourself. You begin to love yourself unconditionally even before the journey your goal of weight loss happens so that is again a huge area that um, opens up when you work on conscious eating that is so deep and so beautiful and so true um i've seen that in my own life um it's so easy to fall into this thought pattern of oh if i only look a certain way, then I will then I will give myself permission to love myself more, or I will give permission to accept myself more, and I will feel better about myself. We we end up connecting how we look with our self worth to such an extent, and and it's always something we're chasing. We're always just you know five kilograms away from from being happier and and and. and experiencing that self-love and self-acceptance. So I, I completely hear what you are saying. For, for so many of us where this is a struggle and I know it is a struggle for so many of us, where do we begin to start course correcting or where do we start beginning to adopt this path of conscious eating more and more? Because for so many of us, the message that we get from everywhere and from when we were young has been the complete opposite of what you are saying. Um, so where, how, do you, how do you suggest, what are the small steps, what are the small things we can start doing or thinking so that we come back to this path of conscious eating and, and stay on that path? Yes. So um, I'll tell you something to begin with, which is so powerful, so powerful and so simple that people don't do it, okay? The people do not believe me. I never believed my mentors and coaches, wherever I learned this tool from, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Tell me more, okay? So what I'm about to tell you, it is so powerful yet so simple, but my promise to you is that if somebody does it for only 30 days, that will bring about a definite shift in the way they eat. There's a law in physics which says that, you know, um, if you observe something 
that something has to shift. We human beings are so powerful, whatever we observe, that shifts. That is what is awareness is all about. That is what mindfulness is all about. When you become mindful of what you're doing, why you're doing, even before intentionally shifting anything you eat or anything that you do, that area starts shifting. Okay, those thought patterns are softening and you become start becoming aware of the impact of that kind of emotional eating that you're indulging in. And that tool is called a food journal. So I, I told you that that is extremely simple, yet it is so transformational and powerful to bring light into your eating patterns and your habits. So that is uh, step one, which I would like everybody to start doing. Start writing everything that you eat in your journal, even before changing whatever you're eating. Just make a note. It is going to take 30 seconds. Note everything that you're eating. It could be on your phone. It could be in a journal. It could be any which way, but do it consistently. And the days you are quote unquote bad, Okay, the days you think that you ate something which left you guilty and you would do better tomorrow and all those thoughts are flooding, coming in your mind. Those are the days not to skip your food journal. Those are the days people tend to skip noting down in their food journal. Those are the days the mind is playing the biggest trick on us. The mind is taking again, taking us again into that unconscious zone. That unconscious place is the place where all that habitual eating is happening. We want to bring light into that. We want to make it conscious. We want to shed light into that messy room. No more hiding, no more secretive eating, everything in front of you, everything that you eat. And so many patients I work with, they're really surprised. They come in the beginning session and they say like, listen, I cannot lose weight. You have no idea I eat like a bird. I eat so little food. <laughs> And then they are so surprised when they start writing down everything in their diary. In fact, there was a research study which they did on dietitians who know all the calorific values of everything. They know their daily caloric budget and quota and everything. And they did this research study where the dietitians had to write down everything and a report uh, that total whatever they were eating in a day. And they had to consistently do that for two to three months. 98% of those dietitians underreported what they were eating. So what they were actually perceiving they were eating was way less than what they were actually eating. Hmm. So if dietitians were doing that, think about somebody who, <laughs> who doesn't know much like about like you know, all that. So whatever we perceive, how much we perceive we eat, it is actually more than that. And so many other aspects. It's going to break your autopilot of just grabbing food at the first urge to eat. So if you have to make a note of that, you are going to become more aware like, uh-uh, I'm eating. Most of the time, it's like the bag of popcorn is gone in front of the TV and you don't even realize that you've eaten the whole bag. Yeah. Now that bag of popcorn goes into the diary, the food journal, start doing that. The next powerful step is if you could remember to ask yourself, am I eating out of hunger or is it a desire to eat? Just desire to eat. Just this awareness. I'm not even telling you to write it down in your diary or journal, whatever. Just bring this awareness every single time. Is this genuine physical hunger? Or is it a desire to eat? Desire to eat is coming from all sorts of emotions and you know all sorts of uh, thoughts which are unquestioned, like that chocolate looks like a good idea right now. <laughs> I need some pick-me-up, all that. And you might not be hungry at all. Okay, just because your coworker offered you something or your mom brought something, some goodies, you had it because it was there. Okay, so you might even think in your mind that is it not okay to eat during all those when you're, you're having negative consequences in your life, then I would really need you to rethink if it's eating, uh, if it's eating that time a good idea. All that eating is not going without impacting your body. 
Mm. Once you start becoming aware of that, then that sort of question becomes, you know, of no um, help. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great. And, um, the third thing that uh, everybody can start doing is, uh, this is a step ahead than the first two, is actually making a plan of what you'll be eating 24 hours ahead, like a day ahead. Mm. So powerful to start developing awareness. Most of the time, it's like, you know, that part of our brain, the primitive brain, which uh, is the impulsive brain. There's no thought behind that eating as to how, how much this food is going to affect me. All you want to do is lose weight. But uh, when there's no planning ahead of time, you will end up eating without even thought of what your plans were. So much of eating is happening that way. So if you could just have a plan and the next step will be that plan in writing. So what will happen is you make a plan 24 hours, like tomorrow morning, my breakfast will be a bowl of oats. My lunch will be, you know, um, two chapatis, dal, rice, whatever is, whatever you plan. So, you know, planning activates that higher part of your brain, that part of the brain that is concerned with your well-being, that part that can actually predict your future with quite an accuracy, that can actually see that if I take this action, this is going to be the consequence. The primitive part of your brain is not concerned with your well-being. All it wants is instant gratification. Right. So when you actually sit down to plan, even if you have zero knowledge about what is the best diet on planet, you don't need to have that. You could have a generalized sense of, you know, even a 10 year old will tell you that an apple is better than a fried food. You don't need to go to a dietitian to know that. We all know that intuitively, right? So when you sit down and plan, that is a huge step in building up awareness. And what it does is day after day, when you start following your plan to the T, it develops this trust in yourself, which again, um, sort of activates and motivates your higher brain to take in charge. Right now, all the unconscious eating is happening because your primitive brain is on the scene. And your higher brain is sleeping and lazy. So once you activate that planning part of your brain, the primitive brain is like, oh, oh, I don't have a chance. Now the higher brain has taken charge. Now the you, the you that you are, the higher being has taken charge. And uh, it gradually builds trust in yourself. And you're like, trust is a big deal for people who struggle with their weight. And people who just have, uh, you know, sort of... Um, non-workable relationship with food. There are many people who don't have weight, a weight problem, but they struggle with their eating. It's like all or none thinking. So many of um, slim people, they, they hate their bodies and they have no idea as to how to approach their eating. So even if they start become, becoming aware and they start adopting, cultivating conscious eating, it makes the journey more smooth and more peaceful. So if you start planning your meals ahead of time and start following the plan and um, start doing that, it's going to develop more consciousness. Wonderful. It's so powerful. And again, with everything that you were saying, I could see again that connection between conscious eating and conscious living. Because just as you said, even with these three seemingly simple steps, but yet so profound, what you're building is self-trust. Yeah. And once you build self-trust, that leads to greater self-confidence. The greater self-confidence will then make you more courageous. Uh, and then greater courage will want you, make you want to take maybe greater risks in your life and in your career. And that connects with, you know, uh, leadership. And it's just, it's, I mean. Yeah, ripple effect. Uh, yeah, huge ripple effect. Huge yes. ripple effect. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I love the way you uh, describe those, those three things that we can all do. I know I'm definitely going to start doing this immediately. <laughs> um, there is a question uh, from our community, a couple of questions from folks who are watching. So Anu, if you stay with us for a few minutes. Yes, yes, um, so one question that we have on Facebook is in the food 
journal, do you suggest writing down the names of the dishes or the raw materials, the ingredients? Does that matter? So um, as your own convenience, I meant whatever actually you'll be eating. So you, you want to write the ingredients of the salad, each one to his own. Basically, I want you to write what exactly you'll be eating. Okay. Like you'll be eating dal, write a bowl of dal. Okay. You'll be eating we, uh, we need paneer, to write, down. write that paneer down. Okay. You know, and do we tomorrow write comes, the don't calories? Do no, this is not about calories. Okay, not at all about calories. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're writing down what we're eating. Great. A um, couple more questions. Um, what what um, contributes more to our overall health, especially how we look? So this was a question that was emailed to us. Is it is it diet or exercise? And I know these are two things, both important in their own uh, regard. Uh, but and I, I know you have great thoughts around this. I would love for you to shed some light here. What's what's more important? Diet is everything. Okay, diet is everything. I want to make it once and for all clear for everybody that you guys, anybody who's struggling with their weight, who have extra weight, they are not overweight because of lack of exercise. No, exercise, you're not an athlete. At least even if, we, you know, athletes also eat so much. We are living our uh, busy lives. We're not going to be spending five, six, seven hours exercising. Are we at the most, we're going to be, uh, just exercising an hour and that too, you know, uh, <laughs> every day, not for everybody. What I'm here telling you that exercise is such a beautiful tool, but if you use it to lose weight, then that's not a good use of such a miracle tool called exercise. You have to learn to disconnect. Now the society is against us. It's just instilled in our brains that you, we, one is fat because of lack of exercise. I meet people who say that I have put on weight because I am sedentary and I have, I have a desk job, I'm bound. Listen, movement has an integral role in the way you should, but it has zero connection with weight. I said it. If you disintegrate the two in your mind, you will have a really good relationship with exercise. You will be able to develop a beautiful relationship with exercise and your body, and you will be able to develop a beautiful relationship with diet. If you connect the two, you will be always running on a treadmill, eating whatever you want, or slightly eating less, and then wondering why the hell am I not able to lose weight? It's very hard and you will really give up um, before you, you know, if you, if you try to do so much of exercise that even puts a dent in the amount of food that you're eating, you might injure yourself. Mm. Okay, so disconnect the two, weight loss and exercise. Exercise is an amazing tool. It is not optional if you're looking to live your best life. I am not saying that exercise is not important in life. In fact, I say that every single person on the planet should move, should stay active for the rest of the day. If possible, you, you guys should have a formal exercise routine of whatever you love, okay? But don't use it to lose weight. Weight loss is all about diet. Diet is 100% everything. You have to work on your diet you will have fabulous results with or without exercise. And then yeah. again, I'm, I'm putting a PS that I'm not discouraging exercise. Yes, yes, no, exercise has huge benefits. For me, it's yeah. primarily about creating more energy in my life to be able to do yes. everything that I do. Yes. You just said it. It's scientifically proven that uh, the more you exercise, I don't mean crazily, but you have more mitochondria in your cells. They are the powerhouses and the more energy you experience. Mm -hmm. So Great. it's a tool to live your best life. No wonder all the multi-billionaires, they have a very um, strict discipline. They, they exercise every single day. If they can take out time, we yeah. can.
Absolutely. All right, we'll make this the last question. This was also emailed to us. Any thoughts you have on intermittent fasting, which I know is, is you know, it's, it's part of our, has been part of our ancient wisdom, but now for the last few years, it's been like the buzz word in, yeah. in the diet world. What are your thoughts around fasting? So again, a fully loaded topic. I can go on and on. But uh, the short answer is that I'm all in for intermittent fasting. It's a beautiful thing. But what I tell and what I teach all my clients and patients is that um, it's very easy, again, to make intermittent fasting into yet another diet and to use it for just losing weight. Intermittent fasting has so many amazing benefits but if your ex but if your eating habits are not in place the foundation is not in place you will end up misusing intermittent fasting there are many people who end up you know unnecessarily starving themselves it's like they're watching the clock and it's not yet 18 hours and i will not eat that is not life Okay, it definitely increases the resilience of your body. But if you have good eating habits in place, you have worked on your belief systems, you have, you know how to deal with your emotions, then when you undertake any sort of uh, such tool to enhance your life, it is amazing. Mm. Great, yeah. great. So let's first get the foundation in place. And then fasting, exercise, all of these other things can be cherry on top and we don't have to connect them so deeply with, uh, with, with weight loss. Okay, beautiful. Anu, thank you so much. I, at this point, just want to take a moment to highlight that Anu is one of our dear mentors for the Conscious Woman program, which starts later this month. And uh, she... Uh, about some of the ideas that she shared with us today about conscious eating, which as you've just heard from Anu, is, um, is, is, is a very deep and powerful topic and it there are so many, so many layers to it. And the thing that I personally love about it is there is such a strong connection with conscious living and conscious leading as well. Um, so really glad to have Anu on board. Um, I also want to mention we do have a few spots left uh, in the Conscious Woman program. And if you're in joining us for this journey, please do uh, learn more about it or reach out to any of us if you have any questions. We'll share more information in the comments below. Um, and on that note, Anu, thank you so much. I, I feel I could talk to you for hours, especially because this topic is so interesting and more importantly, because I love the way you phrase everything. You bring so much depth into something, which otherwise, when you look around, I mean, I feel like almost 99% of people that, um, you know, that are giving advice is, um, I feel like intentionally or unintentionally is leading us into the wrong direction. So I feel like we need to amplify the wisdom of people like you because this is just so beautiful so beautiful and and has so many benefits that go beyond just our health as you said it's it's about how we live how we think yeah i was in that diet thinking trap for decades and that is why this is my passion i would One. love people to end this misery and be free <laughs> On that note, um, so what, what is what is your vision for the world, and what is the um, what is the impact you want to have as being so powerful? But where where do you go next with this? So my uh, mission and my vision is to work with as many people as possible to bring about an impact as to what you said: conscious eating and conscious living. And uh, so that they can uh, become more resilient in life and know how to tackle their emotions and their deep rooted challenge, their thinking that would create their best life possible. See, this area around diet thinking and weight is uh, taking so much of mental space, especially in women. 
they are trapped and they are struggling and they are agonizing and i was there at one time so i know how it feels it is very easy for somebody to say that you know just diet and why don't you just join a gym but it is so painful when you're in the dressing room and you're not able to fill in your fit in your favorite clothes and um, shifting the paradigm to even a bigger picture as to how we show up in our life depends upon how active and energetic and how we feel about our body my mission is to touch the maximum number of people i can through this work because this is this work is so powerful and now i even believe that having that slim body that which many of us think is pretty vain and there is this whole culture of body positivity at health at every size nothing wrong with that that's also bringing in some good stuff but uh, my my thing is why don't you give uh, given your best and why don't you shoot for an absolute desirable loving weight of yours that's possible when you shift your thinking so there's no vanity there you can have it all beautiful beautiful <laughs> anu thank you so very much yeah. and look forward to having you as a part of this program and learning even more from you and benefiting from all of this wisdom so so glad to have you join us Pleasure. thank you so much pleasure bye take care bye